Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It's Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of The Drive. Today, I have Andrew with iPacket. Andrew, what's up, man? How you doing? What's going on, man? I'm great. I'm great. Just uh, enjoying our time out here in Vegas. Dude, I am so glad that we got a chance to connect. You know, I've just, like, I've been a big fan Right, I've I pack it for a long time, and it's just like when we had that opportunity, to say, like, look, we got to jam about this because oh, yeah. you know we were talking a little bit about before we kind of got in here. Just a lot of the things are going on in the industry, a lot of changes. We get back to basics. We got to start selling yeah. stuff. So I am super, super excited to dive into this. But before we kind of dive into this, for everybody out there watching, and listening right now, don't know what I pack it is. Yeah. All right. What was kind of that aha moment for for the company that was like, hey, <laughs> that's problem, and we should go solve it. Yeah. So I mean. If you think about it, for years and years, people have built evidence manuals, worry-free mm -hmm. folders, yeah, value I folders, uh, mostly on certifieds because the manufacturer saw the value there of, hey, we have to educate a shopper why a certified is different, right? Mm -hmm. So they built the paper packets for years. The problem with paper packets, you were a dealer principal, <laughs> nobody wants to put those together. No. Not only that, but how many times would a salesperson get up and go get the packet? How many times would they forget to put it back? So now you're gonna make a brand or new one. Or keep it updated. Uh, oh, definitely all get lost the bad all logistics. the time. Yes. Yeah, all the bad logistics that go along with paper packets. If you put it into a digital format, that solves a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. More so, the biggest problem is you can't track paper. That's true. Like if it's out there, like you know, if I if I make a copy of it and I give it to the customer, which which you know I was we did that at our dealership because it was valuable because it was very valuable yeah. information. I don't know what the hell happened to it after I left the dealership. <laughs> right. I mean, how many times would you go out to appraise a car? I mean, I did. How many times you got yeah. to appraise a car and you see a stack of papers just laying in the car? 100%. Or you find a business card in ungodly places. So that was kind of that aha moment. Say, okay, look, we got a good, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good paper process. Like it actually, Correct. I mean, it is good. I mean, I, I can't tell you even, you know, when I first started in the industry, how many cars I sold off of going to grow grab that folder. Right. Absolutely. I mean, was, we had the, first dealership I worked at, you know, was a major used car lot, right? So there was 350 cars. So there, there no way in hell I was going to know everything about <laughs> no. everything. With this, especially, especially on the, you know, the reconditioning or whatever we got service. Right. right. So it was incredibly important to me from a sales perspective that I could go and grab that folder and, you know, hundred percent right. Educated conversation with the customer. about yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, when you get a customer set down and mm -hmm. you're at the dealership and you pull one of those paper packets, you have their attention. Yes, you have the opportunity to close them right there on the spot. But what happens when they leave? A lot of the times the salesperson will let them leave with a business card. Yep. And maybe some pieces of paper, a car fax, maybe the repair order, maybe the window sticker if they can find it. Mm -hmm. But you can't track it. No, not can't at all. track it. Not at all. So you guys took this this very paper process. You're like, we're going to digitalize it, but then enhance it. Correct. Right. So. So, OK, kind of. Walk me through the sales process and kind of, you know, how dealerships are utilizing, you know, iPacket, you know, and what are some of the benefits of it? Yeah. So we say that success with iPacket looks like every customer gets one. Okay. That's the customer on your website that you can't talk to. You have to be able to build value with somebody, transparent and build that trust. You can't do that with just information on your website. You can, but it's kind of pieced all over the place, sure. right? So having it in one nice centralized location when a customer is hot on a vehicle, nice to have. When they're in store, they sit down just like the paper packet. Guess what? You got the digital format right there. You mm -hmm. can walk them right through all the information and you're never missing info. If it exists, it's in the packet. If it doesn't exist, it's not in there. So, so, so what are the key it. things that need to be in that packet? Yeah. So like the original window sticker obviously okay. is yep. one of the no brainers. It's going to be inside of there. Uh, the uh, original brochure for the vehicle. So if you have a 2017 F-150, mm -hmm. even if you're a Chevy store, you have a 2017 F-150 brochure. If I'm selling Chevys, I might not know the tow capacity on an F-150. 100% wouldn't know right? it. <laughs> so it's already educating your team the more they use it too, which mm -hmm. is a benefit, right? Uh, you've got in there, you've got the Carfax in there, obviously. Consumers always ask for Carfax anymore. Mm -hmm. They've done a great job of building that branding for people to ask for it, right? Uh, things about your business and, and your process, but more so a hidden cost inside of a dealership. And I say hidden cost because it could be a hidden investment mm -hmm is their dealership reconditioning process. For sure. So that repair order, that time and safety and quality that they put into their car that some customers don't even know about, Jason. Well, and it's, it's such a, a key part of that vehicle story. You 100% know? right. It, it, it's funny, you know, you can still go out, you know, and go on AutoTrader or any marketplace and just read some of the descriptions 
um, on the pre-owned vehicles. They always crack me up. They always crack me up, right? Because, you know, I mean, look, some dealerships, if you're watching, listening, you guys do a great job of doing custom comments. But for the most part, they're usually just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. But then you see someone who's selling it privately. Right. Right. And I just, it, it can literally it can be like a 2017 F-150, 27 F-150 at a dealership, two identical trucks, really similar mileage, maybe slightly different color, whatever it is, right? But then you got the private owner. This is when I did the brake job. This is when I did the timing belt. This is when I got the new tires. Like, I mean, they just, they put it all out there for you to see. They build value. Yes. Right? When they come in to try to trade their car in. It's never been in the rain. It's never left the garage. It's a garage cap. I just put yeah. brand new tires on it. They're building value because they understand that that adds dollars to their trade. Yes. Supposedly, right? And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But the way that we like to kind of teach dealerships to understand the value behind that is, number one, when you spend that money, it's an investment, mm -hmm. right? And when you invest in something, you hope to get a return on that money. If nobody knows about it, you can't get a return on the money they don't know about. Number two, if you're selling your house tomorrow mm -hmm. and you put a brand new kitchen in, you redo all the you know all the bathrooms. Yeah, you highlight it pretty big. Yep. What's the first thing your realtor is going to tell a buyer? Exactly that. Brand new kitchen, brand new appliances, you name it. So why do dealerships not lean on that? I don't know. So there was a study, and I'll probably mess up the numbers here, uh, but it was a study with, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what, what publication it was. It was a large publication. They asked consumers mm -hmm. and dealerships how transparent they thought they were being yes. you know, in the business. 78% of dealerships said we're being transparent to customers. Okay. It was like 72% of customers said that it wasn't transparent. They didn't feel, well, they they didn't feel that way. Right? Correct. Yes. So there's a disconnect of what we and the automotive industry think transparency is versus what an actual consumer, which is our customer, yes. thinks transparency is. Well, there's, it, it's perception. It, it's, it's, that's what it kind of comes down to, right? You know, right. it's like, you know, I'll go back to kind of that scenario I was talking about with, you know, the dealer listing and then the private customer listing, you know, by, 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 by being transparent, like, Hey, it's got a new transmission, okay. but, but that, that level of transparency creates trust. Absolutely. And do you find that is, you know, one of the big byproducts is trust. Oh, it a hundred percent is the, the, when, when you can get somebody to trust you, they can make a decision quicker. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what's really cool about a packet is we track when a customer opens it, when you send it directly to them. Yeah. So there's this kind of, all right, let's go down that. So, yeah. so, so walk, because I think for anybody watching and listening, they may not say, oh, I'm sending this, like kind of walk me through like the sales process and how and when someone can send this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously if a consumer is leaving the dealership without buying your vehicle, that would be one way, mm -hmm. but for internet leads, for phone ups, it's just a quick way to get the information in their hands and track what they're doing with it. So that paper process, you can't track the paper, right? So you send it to the customer. Number one comes a digital business card right away. Yes. So how many? So I have all my salesperson's information on there. They they're not get... going to talk to a customer and not hand them a paper card. There you go. Most they include good, a picture most that, good they, they, salespeople. They include a picture of themselves. Absolutely. Maybe a quick little video. So it's a digital business card that tells the story of the vehicle to the shopper. Now, what's yeah. cool about that is we alert a salesperson every time the customer opens that packet. Mm. Not just getting in an email and not just getting into a text message. There are a lot of companies that are like, hey, great job. You got a customer <laughs> open your email. Well, what if Jason like clicked it in his pocket? Or sure. what if he clicked it to delete it? It's not a good time to follow up with them. If he deletes he probably something, he, he didn't like something. We only tell a salesperson when a customer actually gets into the packet in the email. It's intentional, okay. right? What happens from that is you can tell right away when the customer's inside of it. So you know when to follow up with them. Yes. But more so, it does that initial heat check. So what mm. I mean by that is if I call you after I get one of those alerts, couple minutes, Jason, Andrew over at the dealership, I sent you over information on that you know vehicle you were looking at today. Did you get a chance to look at it? Yep. If you tell me yes, and I got the notification, you trust me. Sure. If you tell me no, and I got the notification, I don't have your trust yet. That's a good point. So it gives me an initial heat check right away. Mm -hmm. But then all that information inside of the packet, think of how important it was to know we do needs analysis, right? Sure. Sometimes they're not great. No, right? no, a hundred percent. You know, we, we think this is what they want and this is possibly in the way, but there's a lot of assumptions made. Let's 100%. say that. Yes. So what we do is not only track when a customer opens it, Jason, but we show them specifically where the customer spends their time. And ah, okay. There you go. Now that's now, now I'm actually kind of getting into the head 
my consumer, yes. my customer a little bit because I'm actually seeing, you know, which documents are they really looking at and what time they're spending. hundred percent. Yeah. So you know exactly where to tailor that conversation, yeah. whether it's good or bad. And what I mean by bad is Carfax, for instance. Well, yeah, right? yeah. You can get ahead of the conversation. Like, let's say, you know, I, I okay, I can see this. I can see this. So, 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 uh, customer opens up six times. But, you know, every time that they're opening up, they're constantly just going straight back to the Carfax. Yeah. They're looking at the Carfax. They're yeah. spending a lot of time with that particular page. Yeah. But, and guess yeah. what? When I go to look at that Carfax as a salesperson, there's one accident on it. Yep. What do I need to overcome when I pick up the phone? Well, that's the first thing, right? I need to be ready to, to either answer the question of what happened to that car uh -huh. and, and kind of let the customer um, naturally take their own guard down, walk them through like, hey, you've, you, you know it's a used car. Right. Yes. Have you ever had a shopping cart ding into you in the parking lot or <laughs> have you ever had a fender bender? When you get that fix, that shows it's an accident. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I mean, today, I mean, five thousand dollars is a bumper on a car. Correct. I mean, it, it's really it doesn't Correct. take much. Yeah. No, you no, know, no. you know, I mean, and it's could have just been because your kid backed up into a pole or something like that. And that you doesn't make it a it? bad car and no. that doesn't make it a bad car fax. I hate. I'm not a Carfax employee, so this is genuine for me to Carfax people here that love them. I hate when people say that's a bad Carfax. A bad mm. Carfax is one that lies. That's true. There is actually no bad Carfax. I mean, it's actually it's telling the truth. That's why it's there. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I bought a, remember I bought an Audi. I was, uh, and it, um, on the Carfax had a police report on it. Yeah. Right. And you know, I think any consumer go that. well somebody had sideswiped it all right and a police report had to be created that was Correct. it that yeah. was it yeah that was it. the car wasn't even in motion yeah somebody else hit it but a police report was generated yeah. on it but it also probably got fixed properly yeah by the right people and sometimes those cars are owned two three four times mm -hmm. after that accident happened yes so why should a consumer look at an accident as a negative thing no, I right? think it's just about the transparency of it. It's about right? the transparency and yeah. again, that perception. Sometimes I don't even question. Sometimes of every single car <laughs> out there is never, I'm really, I don't know, man. I mean. <laughs> right, because we drive cars and we know what we do. 100%. So we have to get the customer to let their guard down. And when they let their guard down and they can trust you, mm -hmm. they can make a decision on your product at your dealership quicker. So it's really the ultimate trust building packet of information that's digital across all realms. Well, and I think it's amazing that you guys are able to have this monster library of brochures to go along with it, right? I mean, just because like, who gets a brochure for a 2015 Ford Flex, you know? I like, pack it does. I mean, well, see, I mean, but, <laughs> but I mean, that's cool though. I mean, it's just to be able to say, okay, like, hey, this is what the car was new. These were the specs on it. Because again, even as a salesperson, I mean, I, see, this is what I think as a salesperson, it increases my level of confidence. 100%. All right, I can go in knowing that, hey, this was an SEL package with a panel roof. Yes. All right, and you know, I can talk to what was that you know, package. And then when they come back and say, yeah, but we're looking at this other one. Well, which one, which model was right. that? Which trim was it? Cause yeah. they don't offer a panorama roof in that car. Exactly. Right. Not only that, but if you think about, we'll get a little bit more advanced here. We've been talking about just sending a customer a pack. Let's talk about a phone up. Okay. Let's do it. They that. happen in the dealership all the time. All the time. Okay. A lot of BDCs, unfortunately are phone robots. Sure. Meaning they've never sold cars before. And yeah. they're just there to try to set an appointment. And sometimes they can be totally off site. A hundred percent. So let's say a customer calls in about a car and you have iPack it. Mm. Okay. Well, let's, let's play that you don't have iPack it first. So the customer calls in about a car. We'll use the 2017 Ford F-150. It just yep. always comes to my brain. So customer calls in about the car. Let's say you're the customer. You call in. I'm like, hey, Jason. Uh, yeah, I'd love to answer questions about that Ford F-150. What kind of questions do you have for me? Mm -hmm. Well, consumer is normally going <laughs> to ask you something, yep. right? A lot of the times, what's the go-to line if they don't know the answer as a, as, a, as a BDC rep? What do they say? I don't know. Not only that, I hope they don't say I don't know. I don't know. That kills the I'm conversation gonna be right I away. I audit a lot of conversations. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, you would be surprised how many times the response is, Okay, so we got to get know. back to trading right away. But a lot of the times, at least in, in my experience, a lot of the times it was like, hey, Jason, I know that's an important question to you. I want to find the answer for yes. you. Can I give you a call back? That's the proper answer. But it's not a good answer still, because what happens when I go to call you back? 
Well, it, it, I don't know if you're available. I mean, honestly, who answers their phone with these days? Correct. Anyways, you, you don't know? answer. You gave so, me an like, opportunity while I was on the phone with you right then. You I wanted me to build your trust, just like we talked about yep. while we were on the phone. Yeah. Well, by this time, I probably already called another dealership. hundred percent. You've already moved on. You gave me that opportunity. I dropped the ball. Yep. So we start playing phone tag. We go back and forth, right? I missed an opportunity. How about if you had eye packet? right? Mm -hmm. You have all that information right at your fingertips. So you ask me a question. I start answering these questions. Hey, does that, you know, tell me about the Carfax. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, does it have a panorama roof on it? Look at the window sticker. Yeah, it has panorama roof. It has a navigation system. It has 20 inch alloy wheels on yeah. it. I'm building value, right? And then I say, hey, Jason, you know, the reason I'm able to answer these questions so quickly and efficiently is I have a full history and reconditioning report on this car right in front of me. Well, while we're on the phone, can I share it with you so we can look at this together? There you go. Trans over the conversation we yep. take a verbal conversation yep, like and we turn it into a visual presentation where you're going back and forth with the consumer on the phone mm. how much trust did i just build with that consumer yeah because i can now email it to them and actually review it with them in real time while we're right on the phone that's awesome so if you hang up the phone and you try to call another dealership and you don't get that experience who looks like the rock star that you're going to come back to yeah, it's not one of those, hey, let me go find out and I'll call you back scenarios. Correct. You're answering all the questions and, and we teach them this, right? Answer yeah. answer two or three questions for them and then transition it over to, hey, the reason I can answer this is because I have it right in front of me. Well, full transparency. And while we're on the phone, and trust let's and go time. over it. Yeah. Let's go over it. So we do that visual presentation. You're looking at it on your end. I'm mm -hmm. showing you things on my end. It becomes very easy to set that appointment. Very easy. Oh, yes. Well, because to your point, you know, we've created that trust. We've shown them transparency, right? We have this very documented story. Yes. You know, like, and I, and I, and I say a story, you know, because I think even the information inside the IPAC needs to come out in the format of a story. 100%. You know, like, I mean, consumers buy into the story of a product before they buy into the product itself. Yes. You know, but, you know, you guys are arming them with the information to do this. And this kind of goes back to one of the conversations we were having kind of earlier before we jumped in the van yeah. was, you know, training your team to be able to be storytellers again. Absolutely. Yeah, just just transitioning from, hey, yeah, we have that car. It's priced at 25.5. Do you want to buy it? How do we make this deal come together? The first yep. thing you're going to say as a consumer is, can you can you discount it? <laughs> yeah. You want to build value. We call it the pre-number process. Mm -hmm. The battle for growth starts when? When do you think the battle for growth starts with a consumer? Uh, the second we get into a conversation. The second you meet yep. them. They're already thinking, how can I get a discount on this car? Yep. Because that's what they're known to do. Right? No, and and well, and honestly, that's for the most part, a lot of salespeople do exactly that. Correct. You know, because you see this buying signal. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna skip this. I don't need to know the story. They want to buy, so let me go straight to the negotiation yeah. process. And a lot of these people are commission based. So yes. I bet you if they learned a better way to make money, they'd be okay with that, right? Hundred percent. You know, no, I like that you're bringing this up because I do think that there are some amazing operators out there watching and listening that do yeah. do a great job of this, right? Of you know, really building the value you know, before you get into negotiation yes. process, you know, uh, but you know, it, it's a training thing. You it know? is it's just like, that's, I don't, cause I don't see a lot of that happening right now, right. even though I don't, there are some great salespeople out there. Yeah. Yeah. They, so I, I think one thing that you have to understand is even if you're one of the best operators, they can't be at every salesperson's desk throughout the day. Mm. So that's a great point. standardization, yes. right? What I have in the packet is what the customer is going to see at every intersection of communication. Yes. So my salesperson is going to review it in store the exact way I want them to see it. Mm -hmm. My consumer is going to see it on my website the exact way I want them to see it. Yeah, because there's a lead generation ups, portion that we really haven't kind of talked about. I wanted to dive in a little bit of that because, you know, there's almost there's, there's kind of a branding element that kind of goes along with this. Sure. Right. You know, because look, not every dealership is willing to offer this level of transparency. Sure. You know, so do you find that dealerships are really kind of embracing the branding, you know, opportunity of being transparent, utilizing iPacket? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not a lead provider. Yes. Not, I would never, well, I would never talk to a dealer and say, I'm going to provide you not, leads. Not, not intentionally, Correct. but yes. So we're not sending you leads. I'm not guaranteeing you we're going to send leads. But if you think about, I think they said that, uh, I think it was Cox came out with a study, Jason. They said that out of 10,000 customers that visit a website, only 2.5% of them convert into an actual lead. For sure. So there's a lot of people that bounce from website to website to website before they finally but, submit but, but, a lead. But think of the purpose of why they're doing that. Because they're trying to find information that makes that, them Exactly. They're trying to find information. Good. That, well, they're not getting 
their question answered. Hence, they will continue. I mean, 14 we're, hours we're that all they're researching. Yeah. We're going to do the same crap. Yeah. You know, if I can't find out why this, you know, Sony audio system is better than, you know, this Yamaha one, then I'm just going to go to another website until I fall to end up finding. I'm going to start that searching answer. for the answer myself. Yes. And that is the problem. And, and, and really where that lead generation you talk about kind of mm -hmm. comes from is we give that consumer the ability to research on your website and keep it sticky on your website. So when they get to a VDP, that means they like that yes. car, right? Of course. So once they get to that VDP, let's keep them locked on your vehicle. It's like selling in person. Mm -hmm. You would always tell your salespeople, at least my manager did, I'm sure you did too, land them on a car, land them on a car, mm -hmm. land them on a car, right? If they're in person. Yes. Once they love that car, they test drive it. Don't go show them other cars. <laughs> no. Keep yeah, them locked on that one. Think about a website. Customers, when they get on the VDP and they're looking for that information, they can't find it, they jump off. Of course. They, they go, going. they start searching other websites, manufacturer websites, third-party websites. They're going all over the place to find it. But what if they could just find it on your website? 100%. Well, you know, not only can they find it on your website, but they're going to also get an understanding of reasons like, why am I asking 25 grand? Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, I don't think we ever do a great, you know, well, I mean, I think there are some great operators that do do, uh, do a good job of answering this is why we're asking 25 grand for yeah. this car. You know, um, it, I only get that bits of piece of information when I get into the dealership. Correct. Sometimes. You right? treat that customer that walks through the door as gold. Yes. When you already have that prospecting gold on your website that you never get a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. And there's only one way to build trust and value with somebody you never meet. Provide them with more information. Right? 100%. So having iPack it on your website is almost like having a closer on your website 24 seven. I don't have a salesperson work on my website. No, I might have a chat. It's yep. probably a robot. They can't <laughs> answer questions, right? Let the consumer do all the research on your website and your process, right? We've been talking yes. a lot about what just we put in the packets. We're also able to custom tailor these to your process. Okay, too. let's talk a little bit about that though. Give me an example. Well, so, you know, if you're, uh, I'll get back to the store that I used to sell for. So just specific on new cars with this one exactly, but we were a Toyota store and we had a lifetime powertrain warranty. We offered our new Toyotas. There you go. Now, obviously it wasn't on hybrids and certain cars and whatnot, sure. right? We competed with a dealer probably seven miles from us. That was another Toyota store. Mm -hmm. Anytime a customer came in, <laughs> What was the first thing we talked to them about on new cars? Hey, we offer a lifetime powertrain warranty. A unique proposition. So everybody has their own uniqueness. And it's not the cookies in the showroom. No. It's not the coffee. Coffee never Typically tastes not. good. It's not the comfy <laughs> chairs like this. Your value proposition are yes. the things that you offer the consumer that's part of your process. So we can put those in the packet. So again, like back to that Toyota story, if I'm building my new car packets for that dealership, I'm putting in the lifetime powertrain warranty so they can see that. Well, and that's huge. It's because it, to your point, it's not necessarily what we do, but why we do it the way we do it. One hundred percent. You know that why buy? That why buy? Man, I've I've seen some amazing why buys, and then I've seen some, let's call it some <laughs> amazing attempts. That's why I said uh, like, we have fresh buys. cookies. Like, we got. We have, we have day old chairs. coffee. Uh, we have Wi Fi. That I'm is not, not going to close a customer on a sale. <laughs> <laughs> at all but that's what they put in their why buys but when you come in the store there's a completely different story about their why buy yes right hey we offer that lifetime powertrain warranty we'll give you a service loaner if you buy a brand new car with us we have custom concierge that'll pick up your car if you mm -hmm. can't get into the deal like they build that emotional and, and and exceptional value when that shopper's there but again that person that's researching online that you don't have a chance to meet and talk to yet you don't have a good way of conveying it to them they yes. might have it on their website, but a website's like a puzzle. Oh, it's all over the place. It's I mean, it's, sens it's sensory overload, right? It's there for like SEO and SEM and all that stuff. And we want customers to see it. So we put it there, but it's here, it's there, it's there, it's here, it's there. Why not give it to them in one nice, neat package? Yeah, right I mean, on their VDP you're so getting the story. Everything. Yeah, we're not only getting the story of the, of the vehicle really, really, really nailed down, but now we have the opportunity in a place to also share the story of our dealership Bingo. and ultimately why I do business with us, Bingo. you know, and you know, I think it's probably a great place to, you know, to put a, you know, personalized information about the owners and just their commitment to, you know, the community and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just say like, they're not just, they're not just a part of the community. They're actually in the community, right? you know, and I, you know, I appreciate stuff like that, yeah. you know, look, I'm trying to think, you know, 
you know, there are brands that I have connected with many, many, many years, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I don't even think twice about it, right? It's like, if I'm going to go get a steak, this is where I'm going to go get a steak. Because you, know? you know what experience you're going to get. A hundred percent. I know. And it's consistent, right? And, <laughs> but, but there's also this level of just, and they, and they, and, and, and they verbalize the, the, the commitment to the quality. A hundred percent. You know? Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Right. I mean, come on, look at it. It's, that's an amazing experience. I, I mean, use that <laughs> all the time. I used it three or four years ago. I was sitting down at a fixed op show, mm -hmm. um, talking to him about the value of showing the RO and then just the different pieces of eye packet. And I brought up the Chick-fil-A story. I said, when you go to Chick-fil-A in, in bigger cities, now I'm in West Virginia, so it doesn't ever get too, too crazy for <laughs> me. But you go to Chick-fil-A in bigger cities, they have lines it's like out in the middle of the road. Down a couple blocks. But you know that once you get up to the wind, it's going to move fast, number yes. one. It's going to move way faster than if you went to McDonald's and had that line, yep. right? Yep. You're also going to pay more for the food at Chick-fil-A, but the food tastes better and mm -hmm. you know the experience you're going to get. You're going to mm -hmm. get a, you know, you say thank you. What are you going to hear from that person? Thank you back. No, it's they're going to say my pleasure. My pleasure. That's right. My well, pleasure. The man. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know, like you this. get that experience. And uh, I'm an Apple user. You use mm -hmm. Apple? 100%. iPhone? Okay. So, so I'll get back to my cell phone days. Sold cell phones. You did too. Yep. When a consumer walked in to buy a phone, they will walk in. They say, all right, uh, I'm looking for the new Samsung S7, whatever, right? Sure. First question out of their mouth to me typically after I show them the phone was, how much does it cost? Immediately. Of course. If we walk into an Apple store, an AT&T store, and you're an Apple guy, do you ask them how much the phone costs or do you no, just buy it? I just need a new one. I just need the new iPhone. Yes. Put it on my plan, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want it. I know the experience I'm getting. I know the product I'm getting is superior because they've done a dang good job. I was going to say another word, but I don't know if we can <laughs> do that here. This is but automotive. We've done a Three dang letter good job. Four letter words. Yeah, we've done a dang good job of making sure that consumer, <laughs> Apple, making sure that consumer knows the quality that they're going to get, not only out of the phone, but the whole experience. Well, it, it's, it's setting those expectations. And, 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 I, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that you bring up the experience, you know, because, you know, I, I think in our industry, like if it's like if it's a big problem, it's affecting the experience. We fix it. Right. We know it. Right. Right. Um, there's no parking. Well, okay, if they're going to come and buy a car from us, then we're going to need parking spaces. Right. You know, like yeah. it, it, it's an obvious one, right? But it's not the big things that make an amazing experience. No, right? It is the little things that add up. That add up, you know. But also, just also, it's when those little things happen. The first impression yes. is so insanely critical. You know, I think it's more critical now than anyways. You know, like I like to get your take though. Like, no, I mean you're 100 percent right. I mean, we we talked about it a minute ago that that battle for growth starts the second you shake the customer's hand. 100. percent So I'll go back to the dealer group that invented us. Um, we were invented by a dealer group. You know, okay. talked about that earlier. When they meet a customer for the first time at that dealership, they're a one price dealership. Mm -hmm. They don't go right into pitching the product right away. They go into explaining what one price means. Hey, Jason, Andrew, uh, pleasure to meet you. Have experience. you ever done business here at Astor Gato? Yep. You say, no. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about us. We're a one price dealership. What that means is I'm non-commission based, so I'm here to sell you a vehicle that you love. I'm not trying to sell you a vehicle that you know makes me more money. Sure. Uh, and nobody deserves to pay less for that car than you. So they walk them through what one price means before they even start talking about the product, mm -hmm. because that's important. That's the little things that start to add up. Well, and, and that's one price can be kind of uh, uh, intimidating. Uh, it, can, it, yeah, it, it can be intimidating, but it's, it's actually it's a really, really, really price, good yeah. thing. Like it is at Astor. I promise. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. There, there are dealerships that have made real Say commitment. I'm one price. There's some that have. Yes. So, the, okay. So some that just used it as a marketing strategy. Correct. Now let's talk about marketing from the perspective of iPacket, because I don't know about you, but I'm listening to this and I'm looking at what this is. And it's like. I would be including this as a part of my core marketing message. Yes. Do you find that some of the dealerships are doing this and how they benefit from that? Yeah. So actually, um, we actually have, uh, we actually shoot like this uh, little, I think it's like 30 second reel, like explaining what iPack it is to the consumer. Uh -huh. um, we don't have a whole lot of people that use this and I don't know why. I guess maybe they've moved away from like advertising in this manner, or maybe they just don't understand the value that goes behind it, but sure. we can put their dealership name at the end of it to say like, you know, come shop at, you know, Roarman, sure. in like Chicago area, right? Come shop at your local Roarman dealer and ask for an eye packet today. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like Carfax has done, like branding, you have this consumer to look at one before they buy a car. We're trying to get the consumers to understand that. Well, cause thing. that's how I want to shop. Yeah. I want to shop at an eye packet store. 
and inside yeah. the eye packet, we also have I a know that I'm going to get this very transparent. Yes. All right. Book like so. So let's even talk a little bit about like after the sale. Yeah. All right. So this is one thing. And, and funny enough, it actually you're just, going where just, I think you're going. That's just good. recently happened to me. So, you know, like in my 27, 2017 Nissan Armada. Yeah. I was like, mm, I think it's time we should start looking at something else. And I'm like, great. Yep. Let's do it. Yep. Um, you know, let me, I don't even bloody remember what the hell I paid for that car. Let me see if I could go find, dude, I love I am telling you, here because nobody thinks took about me this three days to find the original documentation. Yes. And, I, and for a moment there, I swear that it was totally lost. And I was like, I don't, dude, I don't even know what bank I even had the bloody <laughs> thing. Finance. Anyways, 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 you know where I'm going with this. I'll let you. I do. Over. So, <laughs> and I promise you guys, I did not tee him up for this. It's just, he understands the value that goes into this. So yeah. So if you send a packet to a customer, it's always live. Yes. Even when the car sells, that packet stays live. And we do that for a couple reasons. Number one, nothing more frustrating to a customer than if I send you a packet and I send 10 other people a packet on that car, it sells, you click on it, it says this car is sold. Yep. That sucks, Big right? Time. You're never going to hear from that customer again, unless they really want another car from you. But if you keep them hot on that car and they finally call in or the salesperson gets a notification and does their job and follows up mm -hmm. and connects with the customer, I can now switch them to another car. So we keep it live. But also, like you said, we keep it live for the reason of that's now your sold information. Yeah. Because you remember now, okay, this is what I paid for it. And I remember Andrew showing me a lot of really valuable stuff in here. Right. So when I go to trade this car in, I can use this as leverage, mm -hmm. right? Well, again, we keep those packets live. So the salesperson now gets alerted too. If I haven't, have you talked to oh, your yeah, salesperson so since they sold you the car? No. So actually, I like this because this is if if this was an iPacket dealership, all right. Here I am, five so years later, all right. Salesperson done a bad job of following up. And, oh, I, I have never even heard from the guy. Yeah. I, 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 hell, I couldn't even tell you who the hell the person was. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but but yeah. So hypothetically, if I was up, I went to go back and I opened it up. I get an alert if I was your you salesperson. Would get a notification so I would see Jason Harris Damn, open a packet experience. on we'll say the 2017 Ford F-150 yep, again. Yep. And then I'm like, Jason Harris, 2017 Ford F-150. So I look at my CRM where everybody should live, right? <laughs> I see that I sold you five years ago. Well, guess what? I'm gonna call Jason Harris and say, hey, Jason, Andrew over the dealership. Hey, I remember I sold you a 2017 Ford F-150 uh, five years ago. I know I've done a really bad job of staying in touch, but um, I got a customer that's looking for one of those. Do you still own that thing? <laughs> well, your timing couldn't be any better. <laughs> now I have a chance to take a customer that I could have lost yes. and turn them back into a sale again. See, I think it's huge. So I, I we think... try to keep that level of engagement, not only from the time that you meet the customer, but forever yes. with that salesperson and that customer. So keep them branded, right? Yep. We do price change alerts on them. I mean, think of how many times you change the price of a car, you're working a customer, you don't know that the price change happened, that could yes. be the make or break point, right? So, so we get notification send, of that. Well, we send, yeah, we send a packet out to the customer via email. So it's mm -hmm. unsolicited. It's not a text message. We don't do it via text because you get spammed, right? Unsolicited, has the salesperson's information in it. It looks like it's coming directly from me telling you the price of the car has changed. Mm -hmm. Now in that email, we do not tell you how much the price of the car has changed. Why? Why? Why would we do that? I don't know. Why would you do it? Because if I put in there, hey, Jason, Sandra over the dealership, the price of this car changed $200. Would you Does click it, on it? No. But then, so now you get an opportunity to make another You connection. have to click on the packet to open it yes. to see what the price change is. When you do that, I get alerted. Perfect. So we're always looking for ways to keep that salesperson that initially started that conversation mm -hmm. connected to that shopper. And it just ultimately ends up creating just a better experience. It, it really does. does. Right. Because like when I think about, you know, um, when I'm buying something big, a uh, house, a boat, a car, ATV, whatever, you know, they're like, I, there's like literally times that I dedicate to get into it because yeah. I'm not going to do it all the bloody time. Correct. Right. It's and not going to consume your whole day. It, it's not going to consume my home day, but right, okay. So the day's done, finished with dinner, I put the kids to bed. Now I got myself the 30 minutes. Yep. Right. So then I can go do it, but, the, but to be able to get that real time notification, Right. And maybe, you know, connect and get in, get back into yeah, the conversation. Shoot a quick text, like, this is the time I allocated still, for this. So yeah. absolutely. Thanks yeah. for calling me. It's the perfect opportunity to connect yes. with a shopper. I mean, CRMs call them what they are. They track tasks. We track consumer interaction. Yes. Behavior. There's a big, yeah. big difference there. Right. CRMs will tell you best time to call a customer is 12, three and six. Yep. 
again, that situation, you're eating dinner at six o'clock. I call you. You're not answering the phone. No, because it's. But if I see you open it at seven twenty three, I give you two to three minutes. I pick up the phone. Hey, Jason, Andrew over the dealership. I sent you over information on that car the other day. You said you're going to talk to your wife about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just by chance, I just got off of a test drive. Had a couple minutes. Did you get a chance to look at that? Yeah. And you're over here like, dude. I'm actually sitting down with my wife right now talking about this. Man, uncanny timing, Jason. Huge, I mean, if you have a couple minutes, I'd love to answer any questions you guys have. Absolutely. So it gives them real time notifications to know it's time to spring into action. And that creates that experience. It creates that transparency. Right. And then it's just and, and, and it creates a a consistent path of connection at meaningful times. Absolutely. Right? Look, Andrew, I know we're getting towards the telling of our time today. I know we can easily continue yeah. to this because it's one of my favorite <laughs> subjects. Well, because it's just, it enhances the experience in such a huge way, right? But yeah. before I let you go, everybody out there watching, listening right now, love to connect with you and learn more about iPacket. Yeah. What's the easiest way to do so? Yeah, so uh, easy. iPacket.us is our website. Uh, we've got an incredible team that takes care of you, not only from the time that we meet you and talk to you guys, but also once you guys become partners. Um, we hold an industry average of about a 96 plus percent retention rate mm-hmm. over 12 years. Wow. That doesn't happen by choice <laughs> or by chance, I should say. It happens by choice. Uh, we have exceptional customer support from the time we meet you to the time that you ever decide to fire us, but uh, it, it really doesn't happen. So <laughs> it happen. Uh, well, it's, it's very such easy an to amazing part of the experience. Guys, if you're watching, listening, and you're looking to step up your game in the experience, you gotta reach out to the guys at IPAC, especially say hi to Andrew for yeah. me. Thank you everyone for watching. You guys have an amazing day.